Seems like old times Having you to walk with Seems like old times Having you to talk with Hi, great to have you with us on Cable Talk, a show that's going to be very pleasing to the eye. A good friend of mine, Greg Cromer, a couple of years ago combined his love of flying with his love of photography and started Virginia123.com Aerial Photography. Please welcome Greg Cromer to Cable Talk. And Greg, it's great to see you. Good great to see you, to Barry. You Thanks there. for having me on the show. I appreciate it. The, uh, I guess uh, the photography thing, you started out with, uh, you know, with an interest in, uh, in, in shooting you know, like nature scenes, up close and personal? Well, even before that, I was doing uh, websites and, and business, you know, photography for uh, advertisement purposes and things like that. But I started thinking that, uh, you know, let my creative side loose just a little bit because, uh, you know, frankly, an ad is here and gone. It's not going to hang on somebody's wall for years and years. So <laughs> I wanted to leave something a little behind. I'm not good enough to write a symphony or paint a Rembrandt or anything like that. But I, I found myself getting better and better with the camera and uh, basically enjoying myself as I do it. So it's a, a nice low stress career. <laughs> These are beautiful. Thank you. My aunt and uncle, uh, Russell and Ruby LaFollette, grow orchids. So that, uh, well, that's not an orchid that you're looking at now, but the other two are. Um, so I started by photographing a lot of what they grow in their greenhouses up near Cape and Springs, West Virginia. Beautiful. Very, very nice. and. Uh, as the interest in the hobby grew, as your knowledge grew, uh, the equipment grew. <laughs> the equipment grew, yeah. I started with a camera smaller than this and uh, went up in the airplane and I, I was much happier with, uh, in fact, some of the pictures I have were taken with this camera. But then I joined the Professional Aerial Photographers Association and saw what the pros were doing <laughs> and uh, quickly advanced to this bad boy <laughs> because oh I just wasn't happy with what I was getting out of that camera. So, you know, a lot of it is not talent, a lot of it is just knowing how to use the equipment and having the right equipment. And in an airplane, um, the one extra thing we have on top of the camera or underneath the camera is a stabilizer. And this thing's running, so it's a little tricky to use. But uh, when I screw this puppy onto the bottom of the camera, and it's spinning at, I think, 20,000 RPM right now. So what that's actually what you've just put on there is a, is a gyro? It's a gyroscopic, uh, gyroscopic stabilizer, yes. So what it does is it maintains a couple things. You see the camera braking there. It just essentially holds it steady as I'm flying because the plane is a moving thing and the air is kind of bumpy sometimes. And especially when you're dealing with a zoom lens like that. Right. Um, and at the very tip of the airplane, or the, the, the lens oftentimes is sticking outside the the window a little bit so you want to keep this thing as steady as possible and the gyro allows me to do that. Unbelievable. And you held this before and it was... I held this and this thing weighs a ton so you're able to... so how are you able to... because the, the plane you're flying with is... Uh, well I'm flying an old antique it's an old 1946 Aronka Champ so it's stick and rudder cloth and wood tail dragger no electrical system I have to hand prop it. Uh, <laughs> No autopilot. No, oh no, no, none of those <laughs> things. So basically, I've got my hand on the stick, and I cross my arms like this, setting the, the gyro on my arm, and I use the rudder pedals to yaw the aircraft. And half the time, I'm not even looking out the viewfinder. I can see sort of what I'm aiming at. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, if the camera's not square, then I'll straighten it up and Photoshop in post-production. Or the plane. <laughs> or the plane, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the nice thing is I'm holding the plane steady. It's right. not climbing, it's not falling and I use the feet to turn. So essentially this is rigid the entire time. Yeah. Now if I was flying a Cessna or uh, uh, you know, a plane with a regular, right. I, I would have a hard time and I, I probably wouldn't do it. It's so just too much to do. perfect combination. It is the perfect combination. All Absolutely. right. Well, we're gonna let him turn his gyro off and uh, then we're gonna come back and look at some of his incredible pictures from the air right after this. 
Hello? Patty, I've decided to follow your lead and file for Social Security benefits online. But, Kath, aren't you back in Zanzibar? I just got on my laptop and went to socialsecurity.gov. It took less than 15 minutes. Wow. You are a miracle worker. <laughs> well, cheers, Patty. I'm off to film a baby rhino. Baby rhino? Welcome back to Cable Talk. We're with Greg Cromer. His love of flying and his love for photography, he's combined them into a neat business. And we're going to take a look at some of his work. We saw the camera that he uses. But uh, let's start off with this one's a pretty recent one. Uh, of Winchester, and uh, you're doing a whole series, as we'll see a little later, on uh, different towns up and down the valley. But uh, and these started out, uh, you know, I, I mainly take pictures of people's homes and businesses, but I wanted to have something to show at craft fairs and other, you know, civic shows and things like that um, that would have a little more popular appeal. Yeah. Uh, when I take a picture of someone's house, the only person that would want to buy it is that person or maybe their parents, I don't know. But uh, when I take a picture of a town, then I have a much wider audience and can sell multiple versions of the same photograph. And that's just a better business model. <laughs> there you go. That is really cool. I but mean, the Winchester shots, it's one of my favorites because when I took a picture of the town, I was just absolutely amazed when the picture came up on my screen to edit the color. You know, I don't know if you can see in there all that well, but you know, on the Loudon Street Mall, you got the bright uh, yellow building, the bright building. There's blue roofs, there's purple roofs, there's all sorts of colors, all the colors of the rainbow. And when you're driving through Winchester, sometimes people's first impression is, oh, it's kind of a neat whitewashed town. But from my perspective, there are a lot of colors in Winchester, and it Absolutely. is a truly world-class, beautiful city. I had one person say, is that in the Caribbean or in Europe or something else? <laughs> Good old Winchester. <laughs> Um, let's just, uh... Now this one was one of the first that I took. I was fascinated by this bridge down below Mount Jackson. It's the Memes uh, Bottom Bridge, one of the only, I think it's the only covered bridge in Virginia that you can actually still drive through. I think that's the, I think that's the clarification, yeah. But uh, you won't see that one ever because that was taken with the old camera, and uh, I'm waiting for the perfect moment to get it with the new camera, but uh, you guys get to see it here today. Susie and I were talking ahead of time here that, uh, you know, you just didn't realize the bridge was that long. It really is. And good fishing, by the way, right by the base. And I flew over this one. Um, I was sad that I came at the wrong time, that they weren't in formation out on the field. But this was at the New Market Battlefield. Um, I didn't want to just circle around because, hey, I'm invading and there yeah. were no airplanes during the Civil War. Um, but uh, I'm going to co coordinate with one of the battlefields this year and try to get some aerial shots of them actually in position. Um, and hopefully time it with some cannon fire as well. So it's just to, uh, that, that, that takes some coordination though. Really nice. Um, obviously these, uh, you know, we saw your big zoom lens. So on some of these pictures where it looks like you're buzzing. <laughs> oh, I'm safely at a thousand feet. <laughs> Um, just like this one I took a couple of years ago in Apple I Blossom. I love this. This is just awesome. Um, I promised my son I'd come to the parade and watch him, uh, him march. So uh, when I was up in the plane, they had already started, and I got a shot of uh, the Sharando marching band from the air. And I don't have that picture with me, unfortunately, but uh, I, I was earned much forgiveness for that by uh, for not actually being on the street to see it. But I did get to watch them go through the reviewing stand uh, from the air. What a great shot. That, that building They don't just, build them like that anymore. No, they don't. And oh, if you don't know the history of the library, it is built to resemble a book. And you have the spine of the book and then oh. the two leaves of the book. And the new part behind it kind of obscures that. But when the, the, uh, the library was originally built, it was to look like a book. I knew that because my I've grandmother was uh, acting librarian back in the 60s. And then I do a lot of construction shots. Um, that's a, a building by the airport. It's kind of neat to see things not just when they're finished, but also uh, while they're under construction, just to see how it goes. Well, you know, it's interesting. We look back at old pictures of Hanley High School as it was being constructed, and it is. It's fun to see it going up. So this is a part of our local history, too. Speaking of under construction, uh, this one was taken back in the fall uh, up at Mount Storm. Oh, wow. And uh, they're building a big windmill farm up on the ridge. Uh, it's a good 4,000 feet above sea level. 
and um, I just happened to catch this one as they were assembling one of those big uh, windmills. And they are huge. Oh, they're I mean, monstrous. Look at, when you can, look at the size of the crane, and then laying on the ground is the, uh, I don't want to say propeller. What's the word I want to, uh, turbine? Not propeller, turbine, right. Yeah. right. The I mean, fan. <laughs> the, I mean, you know that crane is huge, but look, that's just unbelievable, the yeah. blade on that. And you can see some of the cars there. It's just monstrous. They, they stick up uh, well over 100 feet in the air. You know, I guess just like with any kind of photography, right place, right time, conditions. Yeah, um, I have a series here that I, I call my designs in nature. This one was taken up near Martinsburg. Actually, if you, if you know the area off of Route 11, there's a watercress farm. And that is the farm right after an ice storm. And I just love the patterns that the tractor uh, made as it was uh, harvesting, I suppose. I did some loop-de-loops. Isn't that cool looking? You just don't see that from the ground. No, you don't. And then if you've ever gone through a corn maze, sometimes it helps to have a map. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you cheat here. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's the one down, uh, actually right by the Memes Bridge in, uh, in Mount Jackson. And that was it from a couple of years ago. There's and, probably uh, people still lost out there. Yeah, right? and you can see the pattern. You got the, the globe and you see America on the left and then a spaceman and stars in the galaxy on the right. And that was a pretty complex pattern. I remember taking the kids there and we said, oh, let's go for an hour. And uh, we ended up staying there for three hours and we just had a blast. So there's a free ad. And I just have some other kind of scenic shots, um, some interesting patterns of nature. You print all these up yourself, right? I do. Just a, a farm, uh, a field that's uh, been harvested, all sorts of different crops. Who knows what they are from that altitude. Just neat colors and designs. And then this was the farm next door. I just caught a shot of the tractor and kicking up dust there. And a reminder again, Greg was not that low. That's no, that's the zoom lens talking. And this was one of my favorite ones. I just like the way the tree just interrupted the field. Sweet. This Someone is can nice. email me a, a name for that. It needs a name, and I haven't uh, haven't quite been creative enough to give that one a name, but I think it deserves one. Detour. <laughs> there you go. Greg at Virginia.com is my email if you have any ideas. And then, uh, yeah, this is the uh, the library in Stevens City. Yeah, the Bowman Library. Yeah. Great shot. So this is kind of now back into my bread and butter. I'll take a picture of a business or a home, and um, a lot of people like to have them on the wall. For businesses, it's great to have them, even for insurance purposes, because uh, you know you have a kind of an in overview inventory of the entire property. And if anything should happen, they could say, well, we need to replace these trees. We need to replace that shed, that type of thing. Great view of the lake there. And we could have seen this one this year. Um, the Shenandoah did freeze over. That's the Potomac River. Again, that was probably three years ago. Um, what no, it was say. two years ago. Just uh, neat the way the ice picks it up and snakes around. That's up near Williamsport, just west of Williamsport. Now this one's kind of a neat sign of the times. Um, that's Lake Frederick, down uh, down 522, about halfway to Front Royal. And um, as you can see, there's a few houses built there on that point. But as you zoom out, you will see a lot of, of, of empty pad sites. And that picture was taken over a year ago, and I dare say that nothing has changed. Um, residential construction, from my perspective, I flew over and let's say there's 500 pad sites, you know, properties ready for construction. Right. 
I counted six homes under frame the other week. Wow. So that's non-existent. But what I am seeing is a lot of construction on businesses. There's a lot of construction for business. So it's kind of neat. If you've ever played SimCity, you know, you build a lot of houses, and then in the game tells you, oh, you got to build a lot of businesses now. Um,